So there's two things you want to know. One, um, meaning a general overview, it's simply with type 2 is that maybe your pancreas is producing insulin. Okay, it's just that it's not making it to where it needs to go, which is the end result to the muscles. Has to do with, and the doctors will say, well, we don't know what causes it. It could be that your pancreas is not producing any based on being overweight or whatever. Or it could be that your pancreas is, not, is producing, but it's not making it to the muscle cells. It also could ha have to do with maybe the age stage in which you're going into. But in my specific case, it's existed in my family for generations on, on one side or maybe even two. So they're, mm, clinically and medically, they say that it's genetic, that you're more propensed because of genetics. I agree with that, but it doesn't help anyone to um, consume large amounts of refined sugar because the body, I don't think the body was created for that. If you look in history, from, nine, from the, the industrial age on, what did they do for sugars before that? All they had was honey and maybe raw cane sugar. How did they sweeten their foods? Not as frequent. So what happens is the industrial age happens and then they start to refine sugar and make it more potent and more available and abundant, right? So here we have maybe an influx, a greater influx of people after the 1900s that are starting to consume more and more sugar. And our diet, our American diet is completely inundated with forms of sugar whether it's lactose, maltose, sucrose, whatever. So what's happened? The sugar consumption goes up. But not only that, it's refined sugar. That means it's wham into your bloodstream that fast. You know, five minutes, ten minutes, and it's there. And then you have refining of things like noodles, like bleached flour, which is a process that they, that they refine. It makes it so it's, it's absorbed quicker into the bloodstream. So what are we doing to our bodies? From, from a little child till maturity, we are overloading our bodies with quick sugars that go in. And most of us go through our whole life probably with, our, with making our pancreas work three times harder than it needs to to try and balance the amount of sugar that we're dumping into our systems. Are you following me? I don't think the pancreas was designed that. I think it was designed to help, but not in, not in waves like this where you're, you're, you go high consumption and then you drop and then high consumption again and drop. I think that our bodies were designed or, you know, to do these kind of waves, which take lower lower amounts of intensity, and then we should be digesting things over a slower rate. For example, if you were to, to grind up whole wheat and consume that without any treatment, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go into your bloodstream at a much lower rate, slower rate, like a low peak, instead of refined sugar or bleach flour. Go, okay? We're killing ourselves, <laughs> all in the name of money. Bleaching flour, making things more edible, um, and we're not thinking about what our bodies should be doing. With the industrial age, we've brought on a whole set of problems. So with me, there's a genetic pre-existing condition. Uh, and in my life around 45 years old, my activity level went down because of a job change where I went from lifting tons of paper and using those sugars, you know, driving them into the muscles to complete nothingness, meaning I lost my job and I went back to school. So what did I do for two years? I sat around immobile with my head in a book. 
And what happened to my body? I lost my muscle mass because I wasn't continually exercising it. And with my pre-existing condition, the consumption of sugar went down and gaining weight, the resistance went up. Also, you know, there's other th conditions that contribute. Like for males, having going into that, losing muscle mass, therefore your t testosterone drops too. Your testosterone drops, contributes to your activity level. It's a slump, meaning your muscles reduce. You know, males go through something like menopause too. They call it andropause. And you usually, you usually have um, testosterone dropping. Muscle reduction, what consumes the sugar? Muscle mass, right? Your muscles drop, you don't exercise, Cons the amount of sugar in your blood goes up because it's not being consumed. There's multiple things that affect, okay? Uh, that's pretty much basically what I'm, where I'm at. I know that my pancreas produces, but it's not being consumed at the rate it needs to be. So what is the solution? Become more active and uh, reduce sugar intake. That's pretty much, it's an equation, basically. How the diagnosis was given formally is that I had what they call a bowel obstruction. So I ended up in the hospital. At that point is when they started, you know, testing glucose and stuff like that. And they said, now you're officially diabetic. Before that, they said, oh, you're pre-diabetic. You got to change your lifestyle. Long-term symptoms is you feel less energy. Short-term symptoms is meaning on a daily basis when your glucose is up. When your glucose is up, you have um, three things that happen. You have extreme thirst because your body is trying to flush out the concentration of glucose that's high. Um, you have urination that's up because you're, you're trying, your kidneys are trying to get rid of that sugar. So those kind of go hand in hand. But then it's kind of strange, but you get more hungry too. So you, you're, it's just kind of like a spiraling effect that you're, you're damaging yourself. And you notice that when you have your, your blood sugars under control more, you ha you're less thirsty and you, and you urinate less. Okay, that's a good sign. But when you can feel yourself with dry mouth, when you're constantly thirsty, when you may have headaches, when you have malaise, what they call in the medical field, where you just feel like you're dying. You feel like you're dying. Your sugar levels up, you could have migraines. Some people get, when they get high enough, they get confused. And that's the same with having your, your sugar too low. They get confused, they can't. You'll notice that they don't think or they may not articulate well, that kind of thing. Immediate symptoms versus long-term. Long term is just, you know, you, you go through depression. It, it's a struggle psychologically because quality of life. But we like to eat certain things. You know, how, you know what, when you love to eat something and you can't anymore, and you can't eat this and you can't eat that, how do you think you feel here psychologically? You feel restricted. You feel like you don't have a quality of life. Depression is very prominent in diabetics because they feel like their whole life is restricted. What they could do before, they can't do anymore. Quality of life. Lots of people, I know people that didn't care. They were going to do quality of life even if it killed them, and they did. Many people in my family, they didn't care. Meaning they valued their quality of life and they didn't want to take care of themselves, they just wanted their quality of life. And it ended up killing them faster. Like, oh, I don't care. I'll, I'll eat a piece of pie and then I'll take more insulin to counter. That's not the right way of thinking. You see? It's, it's just a quick satisfaction. 
and it has to do with what their idea is of quality of life. Constantly being tired. Uh, I've had moments of depression. I've had moments where I've described I feel like I'm dying. I've had moments of confusion where I, where I had to say to somebody, hey, you know what? I think my blood sugars are up and I'm not, my mind's not working clearly like it needs to. I'm Can taking a triple combination right now. You know, metformin, glipizide, and then there's a new one, which I can't even pronounce. It's supposed to help long-term throughout the day. But, um, and I generally feel I've, been, I've felt better. Most people are just only on metformin or glipizide. There's, there's many diabetic medications out there, and it just depends on what the doctor thinks that you need. Um, anything else for me? I'm not taking insulin. I don't want to be insulin dependent, but if I don't get control right, uh, that's it going to end up what's going to be happening. Uh, pretty much that's it right now. I'm on oral medicine trying to uh, raise my activity level. Another great thing for diabetics that affects us is stress. If, you, if you're in stress, your, your blood sugars go up. If you're sick, your blood sugars go nuts. It's hard to control them. Religiously, you need to, be, you need to know where your sugars at, are at. Okay, now, I'm not the best example, so you're interviewing somebody who's kind of non-compliant. But um, you gotta, you got to be religious. So learn from somebody who's, who's uh, not, not following what he's preaching. What they tell you, yeah, you need to know. You need, it's like flying a plane on manual. You need to know where your blood sugars are, and you need to follow your regimen and cut out. So daily care, yeah, you, and make sure you... Uh, you're checking your feet to see if they're getting pain, tingling sensations, or numbness. Uh, make sure that you've got good hygiene, that you've got um, you've got an exercise regimen. It's at least 45 minutes a day. And it's hard, you know, because what do I do? I'm a jeweler. I sit down. Or I'm not doing a lot of lifting and a lot of cardio because I'm up all night taking care of of little kids who are compromised, you know. Be religious what they tell you, you know. The ultimate cure, nobody's telling you. But the daily care, they're telling you what to do. So when a doctor says, yeah, bring up your exercise level, they're just basically saying you got to burn the sugar off in your body. You got to burn you got to burn it off. You feel like less like you're less human. You feel like you're broke. I mean, you feel like I'm broke. Yeah, my mind. I have. I. What do I have to offer my mind? But I. But you. You can't help but feel that you're broke and you're less than whole. That's with any any disease. Therefore, depression, right? Listen to my interview, understand what they're going through. First, when you can understand somebody, then you can walk in their shoes empathetically, although you never will unless you're diabetic. Diabetes is number two, I think, in the nation for prominent diseases. And it kills, it kills more people than you can imagine. My sister, they took her leg off. My father was taken by a, a heart attack. My sister finally had complete heart failure. So basically a heart attack. You know, it's killed everyone. My grandparents. I watched my grandmother die. Watched my grandfather die. It's a killer. So, like I've said before, uh, to the diabetic, you have to love yourself first and some things, and you've got to um, put value in yourself with what you have you know, in life. And then 
uh, for the family of, the, of such understand that mom or dad may be more edgy than normal because number one, they're feeling the physical effects. They're feeling like they're dying, but they, they're feeling frustrated with the same thing. Uh, as far as things that I've felt, confusion, depression, uh, and, and I think that the diabetes, the age, and the, and the, the low testosterone has to do with your, your activity level, your, your depression, too. You see, diabetes isn't just, oh, diabetes alone. Diabetes pulls a menagerie of secondary sicknesses with it. Heart condition, um, depression circulatory problems in your limbs, eyes will go out. It affects a lot of different things. Those are pretty much the most prominent ones though that are, are secondary diseases. Because why? The high sugars in your blood. You're destroying your capillaries. You're destroying the really fine places with the high sugar. Your progression, you you go long enough with your, your long-term A1C levels high enough, then you lose your eyesight, you lose the feeling in your feet or your hands, and eventually you have a heart attack. Those are the most prominent. That's pretty much cut and dried. You keep those blood sugar levels up high enough, and it starts to destroy the retinas in your eye. It destroys the capillaries in your fingertips. That's why people's feet go numb or they have pain. Then all, everything degenerates. Then you get, when you have kidney failure, everything degenerates. You, you get what we call edema, which is your cells swell up with water. Your feet become, or your ankles become swollen because you're not pulling the water out of your cells. It affects everything. Eyes, probably not ears, uh, extremities, heart, limbs, organs. You just come, to, come apart. And it's a silent killer because in the moment, unless you're having a really high glucose, you don't feel the things dying, but they're slowly dying because of the sugar in the bloodstream. You're slowly dying. You can slow it down. You can make it, quote, stagnant. Uh, many people can live productive lives, normal, but they, those people have to cut out the sugar and exercise two or three times more than a regular person who would never get diabetes. Do you see what I'm saying? They have, to, they have to consume that sugar and make it a lifestyle change completely. No, let's not say that diabetes is killing everyone the same. There are people that are able to get on top of it. They're still diabetics, but it's like in a dormant state. And, and some people, I think some doctors even come out and say you're not diabetic anymore because maybe your, your, your glucose levels are way down. It takes lots of work. Lots of work, it's lots of self-discipline.